How you guys doing? Awesome, awesome. <laughs> well, good morning. Ah, oh, come on, we gotta be awake. Good morning. All right, we're going to wake up. we got to wake up this morning, all right, because we're going to get into God's Word, and there's nothing more exciting than jumping into God's truth and God's Word and, and hoping that it really just rocks our, our, our life. It really just wakes us up because uh, God coming to church Sunday morning shouldn't be a, a, an event. It should be a movement. After you leave here, it should really just change your life and move your life into a better stage and that you follow Christ, and it should cause a life change, and we'll see that today. So I want to thank uh, just uh, Pastor Dean and, and everyone for this opportunity to be up here and, uh, and be able to preach God's truth and God's word. And um, um, as a substitute uh, pr- uh, teacher or preacher, however you call it, uh, uh, substitute uh, preachers tend to preach on uh, what's going on in their lives at the moment. You know what I'm saying? Because they, like Pastor Dean, he preaches every Sunday, so uh, he's got to get in there and come up with something fresh every week. Uh, for us, uh, it's, sometimes it's not that hard because there's things that have been going on in our lives since the last time we spoke that, man, there's so much we could speak on. So as I was praying and I was really thinking through it uh, when Pastor Dean uh, texted me, I said, man, what am I, what am I going to speak to? And, uh, and uh, God just really laid this on my heart, today's message. And uh, today's message, we're going to talk about trials. We're going to talk about trials. We're going we're gonna to talk about specifically why trials. The question why. Uh, we've all been there and uh, we've all said that. So we're going to try to answer the why trials. Uh, because in this stage of my life, uh, as I was looking back and after summer camp, uh, uh, you know, because I work at World Life, you guys don't know, and um, summer camp is just go a million miles an hour uh, all, every day, and you're busy, 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 and you don't get to stop. And after camp was done, uh, real life hit again. <laughs> like, real life started. So I was looking through my mail and realized, oh, man, I missed my... Uh, five-year appointment for my uh, military uh, medical, and I'm like, great, which reminded me that five years ago, uh, this year, uh, I went through the biggest trial of my life. Five years ago, I went through a situation that I I would never, I would be saying, I I was saying, why God? Why? Why would you do that? Why, why, Why am I here? Why am I going through this? And then not only that, but thinking of September 11th on Friday, a lot of people were saying, why? 15 years ago, was it 15 years ago, correct? 14, 14 years ago. Why God? Why would that happen? And you know what? That's a a question that we all ask. Why? Why is the question that hits the hardest? It's the question that hurts the most. It's the question that lingers longest, and it's the question that every follower of Jesus Christ has asked one point in their life. They have asked why. Why, God? And they've they've shaked their hand, they've waved their finger, they've asked why. And it's okay. It's okay to do that. And we're going to see through God's truth why we go through trials, why God puts us through those situations. So if you turn your Bibles to James chapter 1. James chapter 1, we're going to start right there, but I'm going to open up in a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for this wonderful day you've given us. Thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to be in your word today. Thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to just jump right in and study your truth and grow from it. Lord, as we go around and see what your word says about trials and, and why we go through them, I pray for that person, person's or family that may be sitting here right now saying why in their own life. Because we know in the, in the body of Christ, this size, there's people here who maybe last night or this morning or, or this week were saying why. Why? And I pray for them. I pray for all of us that we're able to grow from your truth and be able to learn and lean on it. And be able to take it home with us and be changed by your word. We love you, Lord, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So in James chapter 1, verse 1, we'll start off. It says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes of the dispersion, greetings. Basically, he's talking to believers. James just starts off real regular. He's just talking to believers. And in verse 2 is where we see our first thought. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kind. Count it all joy. When you meet trials. Any of your Bible say everything, anything else besides count? The word count, there's something else. What does it say? Consider. That's a good one. 
I like consider. Consider your trials joy, is what James is saying. Isn't that pretty ridiculous to think? Are we really ought to consider our trials joy? Yes. Because we have to understand that joy is different than what us humans think self to be joyful. We just don't have it. Turn to your neighbor and say, you don't have it. Turn to your neighbor and say, you don't have it. You don't have it. You don't have it in yourself. <laughs> wow, some people, you don't have it. They were going at it. <laughs> Listen, the truth is, though, we don't have it. We don't have it in ourselves to be joyful. Our joy comes from God. Our joy comes from God. And that's only to say, here, here's joy. Here, here's three, point, three little things about joy, supernatural joy. It is a supernatural delight in the person, the purposes, and the people of God. Let me give you that again. Joy is a supernatural delight in the person of God, the purposes of God, and the people of God. That's what joy is. Joy are these three things. And the truth is, we all have experienced this at one point in our life. The person of God, for example. We've experienced the love of God, or maybe we felt it in our lives. So you know what? Better than that, we've seen it in our lives. That moment when you've seen God move in a miraculous way in your life. Have we been there? I know I have. I know I've seen it. I've felt it. I've seen it in other people's lives. When you just see that God is doing something awesome and know through his word that it is God and only God that could bring that and make that happen. When you see his love in your life. How about the purpose of God? There's something bigger than me going on in and through this trial. Something that is bigger and better than me. That's the purpose of God. That's supernatural. That only the joy of God could help you understand that through this trial, there's something bigger happening. Something better happening. Nothing that you can do. Nothing that we can do. But something that God brings through. Through that, through that situation, the purpose of God. See, God has a purpose in what we're going through, and I'm going to find a way and trust him even though I am not seeing it right now. That's the purpose of God. That's joy right there. Saying that I know God has a purpose in this situation even though I don't see it, but I am going to trust it. That's joy. That's what supernatural joy sounds like. When that family is going through that serious situation, death in the family or illness, and they choose to say, God has a bigger and better purpose through this, and we're going to make it. That's supernatural joy. That's the joy that can't come through our own doing, but only through God. How about the last one? People of God. See, we're doing it right now. There is something awesome about being together with brothers and sisters of God. That's why he says right there in verse 2, look at verse 2. It says, count it all joy, my brothers. He's talking to believers. He's talking to people who understand what Jesus Christ did on the cross, that he came down and died for our sins, and he rose again, and he defeated death. The people of God, there's, there's joy in that. There's joy in fellowshipping with believers. See, only Christians get this. Only a follower of Jesus Christ will understand to consider a trial a joy. Only a believer would understand that. A non-believer tries happiness, but that runs out really quick. We try to fill that void with stuff of the world, correct? Correct. We try to fill that void with things or, or substances or, or whatever is out there, but it's only momentary. See, supernatural joy is more powerful than that. But see, only believers really understand that because believers understand that it comes from God. And see, if you're a non-believer today and you're here and you don't understand this, this joy or you, you're questioning what, it, what is this believer, non-believer, listen, I pray that by the end of today you come to understand the free gift of the cross of what Jesus Christ did for our sins. And you join the family of God so you could see and experience this supernatural joy. Because everyone goes through trials. 
believers or non-believers go through trials. There's always a storm coming over the horizon. There's always a storm. And we know that better than most living in Florida, correct? <laughs> There's always a storm coming over the horizon. Believers or non-believers go through it. But believers understand that when it says count it all joy, that joy comes from God. That there is a reason we're going, we're going through that. We have that we have a higher objective, objective in mind. We have a higher, a higher purpose. There is a higher purpose. See, there is a reason you're going through that. Through salvation, you will understand that the higher objective that we have, look right there in verse 2. This is a higher objective right here. You see the word uh, right there at the beginning of verse 2. It says count. How many of you guys have a different word? Consider. I like that one. Consider. Consider. Some Bibles say consider. Some Bibles say count. What it's trying to say is, is look at your trials and consider them or measure them or calculate them. Or here you go. Here's a, here's a better way to understand it. Press your mind or think upon them. And there's a reason why you're going through them. That's what that's saying. That's what the word calculate, that's what the word uh, count, consider means. See, you're not going through them for approval of man. You're not going through this trial so that you can have a pity party and people feel bad for you and, and build your ego up. You're not going through these trials so that, so that people could, could give you attention and, and you, you build your own self-esteem. No, you're going through these trials because it's for God. That's why we have these trials. That's why it says, consider, count them all joy. Because there is something to consider that we're going through these for. We're going through these for God. We're going through these for God. See, the only reason we, we are even here right now this morning, the reason we draw another breath, the reason we are able to wake up this morning is because God gave us that. Because he has a purpose for us. Because he has a bigger plan than what we think he has. He has a bigger plan. And he has us here. That's why we're here this morning. That's why we're listening to God's word. We're not listening to Joel. We're not listening to <laughs> the, the distractions around us and lights flickering. No, you know what we're doing? It, we are listening to God's truth because there's a bigger purpose, a bigger plan. See, our life is about displaying or should be about displaying the superiority of our lives lived in and through God. Let me give you that again. Our life is about displaying the superiority of our lives lived in and through God. That's what it's all about. That's what he's saying by consider. That's what he's saying by count it all. Because it should be an example of your life being let, let, lived and being an example through God. See, that's why Christians get cancer. See, that's why Christian parents have prodigal sons and daughters. That's why Christian business owners uh, end up in maybe bankruptcy or a partner in business that turned on them and gave them a bad business. Or that's why some Christian young men and women who we look upon and say, man, that is a solid young man and woman, but they are still single. Now listen, for them, that's a trial. <laughs> when I was 28 years old, it was a trial and I was single. <laughs> but see, we have to understand that there is a difference in the way we as Christians handle things and the way the world handles things. There's a difference. There should be a difference. See, go ask the doctor or go ask anyone who works in the medical field, Dr. V uh, Mr. Vanway or, or Robin who's, do, who's working uh, in a hospital now or, or Lauren. Here, you could ask any of them that there is a difference in a heartbroken parent who, who is without Christ and a heartbroken parent who is with Christ. There is a difference. Because Christians go through these trials differently than non-Christians. There should be a difference. That would, thank you. That was a good spot for an amen. That was. Because we have supernatural joy through God. And that helps us make it through these trials. And that is also the reason we go through them. And we're going to jump right into that right now. See, like I said earlier, 
The moment, that moment is right there. When you have that heartbroken parent who is a Christian in a hospital, that is the moment right there that we're going through these for. That is the ob- objective. This is our time, or that is our time, or your time through your trial to shine the gospel or to show the superiority of God in your life, that he is God. And people see that. People will see that. And that is why we are joyful about trials. But here it is. We can never get to the understanding of joy in our trials by submitting joy or substituting, I mean joy, with worldly happiness. See, like I said, happiness is momentary, and that is what the world or happiness offers us. Happiness through substance abuse. Don't we see that all the time? Don't we see when the world, when it starts getting real heavy for people or, or life starts getting heavy, they're lined up around that bar trying to f- substitute it. Don't understand why life is so heavy, but they're trying to drain it away, Right? Isn't what they do? Am I the only one that sees that? Am I the only one that experienced that before? Because I know there's been a time in all of our lives where we've tried to substitute joy. There is. I don't stand up here as a perfect person. I stand up here as a man redeemed and restored by God's power. And I think that's all of us. So we see that, listen, the only way we find that joy is through God. We don't find it through, through filling it in with stuff for this world, like substance abuse or, or, or what people do, bad relationship after bad relationship after bad relationship, ready to jump to the next one because they feel empty, they feel void, they feel lonely. See, a Christian understands that the reason we are in trials is because God is about to win, he is about to be glorified, and the gospel is about to shine, and God willing, someone will see that. That's why we count it all joy. That's why we count it all joy. Two more quick things, and we jump into more of the why. Look at verse 2. When you meet trials of various kinds. How many of your Bibles say something else besides the word meet? What does it say it? Experience, what else? Fall, I heard fall. Fall, that's a good one. Face, that's a good one. I like fall. Here's our fall. Here's why I like fall. Because that's what trials usually are like. We're kind of cruising, we're kind of just hanging out, doing life. All of a sudden, boom, it's like you fall into a ditch, right? You didn't even see it. Right? That's like a trial, right? You're just, you're just hanging out, you're just doing life, and bam, smacks you right in the face. That's trials. That's a trial, right? We've, been all, we've all been through that. We thought we were coasting. We thought life was great and, and God is doing awesome things. And all of a sudden, boom, we fall right into it. That's okay, though, because we're here today. We just heard it right now. That's how trials are. So next time you're boom and you're surprised, time out, back up and say, hold up. I've heard about this. James says sometimes you fall right into it. But you know what? Count it all joy. So don't be surprised anymore from this point on when you fall face first into a trial, okay? Because we're giving you the warning right now, all right? You're, this is a heads up. This is a heads up call. Hey, you're going to fall into a trial. Like I said, there's a storm over the horizon in everyone's life. Some people see it, some people don't, but when you're in it, you're in it. Be ready. Look at the rest of that verse. It says, when you meet trials of various kinds, that word various, the word various is the same kind of word or same kind of definition or, or explanation they use in the Old Testament when they were talking about Joseph's coat of many colors, of various colors, different colors, different colors in that coat, various trials. See, we all have various trials. We all have different trials. Not only do we have different trials in our own lives, but we have different trials in the body of Christ. Here's a good example because, well, let me give you an example. In about, is it nine days? Nine days, babe? Nine days, right? Uh, the 24th, today is the 13th. I, I did public school in Miami, so my math is horrible. So if you want to help me, that's great. All right, nine days? Yeah, the 24th. Well, it's going to be Janelle and I's four-year anniversary. Mm. Thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Feel, it feels like four days. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, four-year anniversary. 
<laughs> For her, it probably feels like 40. It's like a wandering in the wilderness. <laughs> For, so four years. Now check this out. This is what I mean by various. In our life, for maybe the past two and a half, three years, we've been trying to have a kid. And we haven't been able to. Now, am I supposed to go look at the Smith family next door and say, oh, they're having issues with their kids. Wow, at least they have kids. I wish I had their trials. No, right? That's, see, that's what he's trying to say by various trials. Hey, don't look at someone else's trials because God is trying to teach you something different within your own trial in your life. Don't be jealous of other people's trials because God is teaching them something else. Be ready to learn and grow from what you're learning in your own trial. So what me and Janelle do is we just try to, try to pray and ask the Lord, what is he trying to teach us? What is he trying to teach us through this trial? And you know what the cool thing is? He, not only can he teach us, but we could be a blessing to others who might be going through the same thing. I don't, don't be jealous of other people's trials. There's various trials, and you will have various trials in your own life. Learn, what you're, learn or be ready to learn what God is trying to teach you in your own life, in your own trials. So let's jump in. Here we go. Why? Why trials? Verse 3. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. The first one I see is God wants to test our faith. God wants to test our faith. We go through trials because God is testing our faith. How many of you guys enjoyed tests in school? How many of you guys love tests in school? <laughs> one per- Always that one person. Always that one person. You were probably one who didn't even study, just went in there, aced the whole thing. You, and you loved it. Oh, God. she was embarrassed. She was embarrassed. Hey, don't be embarrassed to be a nerd. It's good. It's good. It's a good thing. It's a good. I, I, here's the truth. I wish I could have been a nerd. I, would, I, probably, I mean, probably would have worked out better. No, I think it's fine. Hey, here's what, here's what it's saying. God's testing our faith. God wants to test our faith. And through the testing of our faith, I believe God is showing his love. I believe when God tests our faith and we fall into trials, that's God's love in our life. I, I firmly believe that. And I think and I pray that you see that too. I, don't, I pray that you don't wave your hand at him and get angry. I pray that you say, you, ba- you back up and you say, okay, here I go. I'm about to go into trial. That's God's love pouring into me. Here's why. Because I want my faith to be tested. I want to put all the weight of my life on the faith that I have in Christ Jesus and see how it holds up. That should be your desire. You should want us, when, when it starts, when the trials come and you start getting tested, you should say, okay, here we go. We're going to see how my faith holds up. Let's ho- hey, I, I've been ready. I hope this works out. That should be our desire. That's really what God is trying to achieve through testing of our faith, through trials in our life. He's trying to see where our faith is at. He's trying to see if we are holding strong. Here's why. Because if your faith hasn't changed you, it hasn't saved you. If your faith hasn't changed you, it hasn't saved you. Make sure you catch that. Now, don't, don't, don't charge the stage. I'm not talking about losing salvation here. That's not what I'm talking about. Thank you. One guy got that one. <laughs> I'm not talking about losing salvation. That's not what I'm talking about. That is totally different. What I am saying is that a true follower of Christ looks and acts different in trials than a person whose eternity is in hell. That's what that is. That's what the testing of our faith produces. And if you know Jesus Christ and you know you are saved, but you feel that you're still losing or you're failing the test, then, we, then let, me give you, let me give you a little Cheat sheet. Is that how it's called, right? A little, little pre-test. Here, it is how you pass. Here's a couple questions that are usually on the faith test. Question number one, do you believe that God is in control? When you start going through the trial, do you believe that God is in control? That, that's, that, 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 this is the test right here, right? If you, if you want to write this down, this is, a, this is an easy way through this test. You're going to ace it. Right? You're going to end up like <laughs> Miss Chamness and ace the test. Question number two, do you believe that God is good? And are you willing to wait in faith until you see it? Those are questions on the test. 
Because you will see it. Either now or later, you will see. You will see that God is God and he is good till the end of time. And that's through the testing of our faith. That's why we, be, that's why we are tested to see how strong our faith stands up to whatever is around us. How strong we believe that what, what our main objective, which is glorifying God and bringing out the gospel, how strong is that going to last? Is it making it through the test? Is it making it through the storm? And then you see at the end of that verse, verse 3, for you know that the testing of your faith, here it is number two, produces steadfastness. Steadfastness. See, the word steadfastness has a strong meaning in its original context. In Greek, now don't think that I know Greek. I just had to study it. I don't know anything about Greek. I just realized that the English version, steadfastness, doesn't give it enough justice. In Greek, though, it's actually two words. The first one would be remain, and the second one would be under. So it's saying remain under. So not only is God testing our faith, seeing if we pass that, but he wants us to remain under. Remain under that test. He wants us to say, okay, we are, we are about, to end the, uh, about to start this trial. We're going. It's going to get hard. Let me remain under. He doesn't want us to quit. That's a good, that's a good kind of same thing. It's no, the no quit attitude. That's what that means. That's what steadfastness means, that you're ready, that you're going to stay with it, that you're going to be ready to go through this storm and not give up. Because we have enough quitting in this world. We quit in our marriages. We quit in our relationships. We quit in our children. We quit in our jobs when it gets hard. We quit in life. We're ready to quit. We're ready to give up. We're ready to throw in the towel. But see what James is saying is God testing of your faith is also included with not quitting, with steadfastness, with remaining under the trial. You have to be willing to stay under the trial. You have to be willing to tough it through. Because every good thing that God wants to create in your life comes from remaining under the trial. That's how we grow. That's how we're molded. That's how we're built up through trials. Not, not when everything's fluffy on clouds and we're walking and hanging out and bunnies jumping around and there's roses. I don't know what that is. I just, that was a really weird example. I just, all things I could think of that were happy, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> bunnies and clouds and roses. I don't know. But that's not, <laughs> hey, that's not it. You know when we get, you know when we grow? You know when we grow in God's word? Under the trials. When life is hard. When the stuff is hitting the fan. When we feel like we want to give up. When we don't want to do it anymore. Listen, I'm just being blunt because we all have been there. We all have been ready to give up. And let me tell you one thing, and, and, and I hope this comes out the right way. Listen, there's no expiration date on this. Whether you're young or you're old, you're going through trials. Uh, we don't have old people here. I know we don't, but I'm just to give you an example. <laughs> we're going, we're all going. There you go. Count it all joy. <laughs> Listen, we're all going to go through trials. He's going to put us through a trial. Whether it's our, our loved ones dying, whether it's a disease, whether it's hard times, whether it's our kids going off the deep end, whatever it may be in your life, big or small, it's a trial. And God is trying to build us up in a way that glorifies him and shines his light and his gospel and everything we do. So he tested our faith. So why trials? So that our, our faith could be strengthened and, and tested. So that we could build a, a steadfastness. A no quit attitude. Not an attitude of, I didn't expect marriage to be like this. I didn't expect kids to be like this. I didn't expect work to be like, I'm out of here. I'm ready to throw in the towel. But God is trying to accomplish something through our trials. You just have to stick with it. See, when we remain under that word remain under steadfast. When we remain under, we see God in our life and grow into the person that he wants us to be. Why do, we, why do we need to stick through it? Because the nail that doesn't remain under, the hammer doesn't reach its goal. The diamond that doesn't stay under, the chisel will never become a precious jewel. The gold that doesn't stay on the fire will never become pure gold. 
And the Christian who doesn't remain under the hand of God will never see the purpose for the trial that God had put in his life. That's it. That's it right there. That's why we remain under. That's why we choose to stay under and keep going when it gets hard. Because there's a bigger purpose in life. And lastly, verse number four, James chapter one, verse four says, and let steadfastness have its full effect that you, com- that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Here it is. Trials produce life transformation. Trials produce life transformation. But you have to stay under it. You have to be willing to be tested and then you have to be willing to stay under that trial so that you can see life transformation. See, there's a, a guy that I worked with. His name is Jay at, at World Life, and now he's a pastor down in Brandon. He used to say this all the time. See, the God should be of movement, not a moment in our life. What we experience from God should be a movement, not a moment in our lives. That's life transformation. When we come to church Sunday morning, it should be a movement that we take out these doors and people see it, not a, not a moment here on Sunday morning so we could get ear candy and feel great and go home and watch football and forget all about it. No, that's not it. Life transformation. Trials produce life transformation. Here's a good example of that. I used to play, or should I say, try to play basketball a lot when I was younger, and even now I play a lot of basketball. And uh, there's a coach here, so he might be able to, to uh, confirm this. I'm not too positive because you'll see why. Uh, I used to sprain my ankles a lot, you know what I mean, I, because I just because I cut so fast and I was so good, you know what I mean? I cut. So I used to sprain my ankles a lot, you know what I mean, all the time. And recently when I got married, you can ask, you know, I'll sprain my ankle and I'll be hobbling home. And I'm like, oh, I'll get home. And she's like, here, put some ice on it. She'll give me an ice pack and, and I'll put it on there. And oh my word, three, 10 seconds, I'm crying like a baby. I'm like, oh, no, take it off. Take it off. <laughs> oh, 20 seconds. I'm just like, please just cut my leg off instead of put ice on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But here's the truth. I mean, this is what I've heard. This is what I study. I've never tried it because it hurts too much. But if you dip your ankle, that ankle, the moment you got hurt, in a full bucket of ice and left it there for at least three to five minutes or probably longer, man, you'll be good to go maybe in a couple of days. You'll be good to go. You'll be probably even good to walk maybe the next day. I mean, it takes me about a week because I never even iced it because it hurts so much. But see, that's the exact same example we, we have with trials. The reason we have trials, the reason we have pain in our life, the reason why sometimes there is suffering and we choose to stick it out because at the end, we'll be able to walk immediately and faster through God's glory and shine God's truth faster and, and, shine, and let others see who God really is through our pain. But we have to choose to stay in the pain. We have to choose to keep that foot in the bucket. I have to choose to stick it out. And as you see at the end of that verse, it says, and let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Lacking in nothing. Who's the only one that's lacking in nothing? Jesus Christ. Who's the only one that is lacking in nothing? Come on, I want to hear it because this should be something that's just living through your soul because the fact that we have this opportunity and unbelievers are lost and seeking other things to fill that void, it it should be, wow, we have this power. Who is the only one who is lacking in nothing? Jesus. Jesus. But it says there, the moment we keep that foot in the bucket and make it through the pain, we will be with him lacking in nothing. You know what that's an example of? That people will see Jesus Christ through our life. Jesus will see Jesus Christ through our life, through our pain, through the hurdles that we have to jump through. Make it through those trials. Why do we have trials in our life? Because we need our, t- our fe- faith tested every now and then. Because our faith could vary. But when God tests our faith, we remain strong. And see, it's not a test like a pop quiz, like you go to school and then that morning uh, in the homeroom, they're like, okay, there's a quiz. And you're like, oh, Lord, give me wisdom. There you go. And then you prayed for your test, even though you didn't study. No, no, no. This, is, this, is the, this should be the kind of test that you are prepared for. Because we come to church every week. We hear God's word. You should be studying God's truth throughout the week. So you are prepared for this test. 
This is the kind of test we're talking about. This is the kind of test that you are ready for because you should be living a life so ready, so in tune with God's word that it's not going to be a pop quiz. You're ready for it. So he tests our faith. Why else do we do tri have trials? So he could build steadfastness in our life so that we won't quit and give up when it's hard, but so that we could stick through it, remain under it, remain in the pain. And why? So that it could be, last one, so it could be life transformation. So that not only is there life transformation in our own lives, and we're able to see what God really is trying to do in our lives, but so that others, which is the main point, so that others who don't know Jesus Christ are able to see Jesus Christ through our life. That's it right there. That's why we experience hardship. That's why we experience pain. That's why we feel like we're lonely. That's why young people seek relationship after relationship. They're trying to fill it with other things. But if you're a young person and you're seeking God and God alone, you're able to show people that all you do need is Jesus Christ. Like I said, at the age of 28, I was, man, I was in a trial. 28 and single. I felt like I was, I was under it. I didn't want to remain under it. But it wasn't until I wrestled with God for four months in my own trial, in the hospital, where I realized that, wow, that's why we have trials. So that God could be glorified at the end of this. Not so that I could get what I want out of it, but so that God could be glorified. And you know what? The, the, the blessing out of it, man, I, the, the blessing of me being faithful and staying under it and staying with it and, and keeping that bucket in the, in the, that foot in a bucket and dealing with the pain is, I was, man, God blessed me. I have a beautiful, awesome wife. Yes, yeah, so that's a good spot for an amen too. <laughs> but listen, I didn't do it for the blessings. I did it because I came to a place where I understood that I ought to live and do everything I go through and everything I do is to glorify God. There's just a lot of awesome perks after it. So if you're an unbeliever here today, with all heads bowed and, and, and eyes closed, I'm going to give you the opportunity to receive this God this God, the only God that could give us joy through our trials. The only God that could help us make it through the hard times and the storms of life. The only God that could give us what we truly need to stay and remain under the trial. If you don't know this Jesus Christ, I want you to pray this after after me and repeat it. Uh, this prayer does not get you saved, but uh, admitting or, or confessing this to God, accepting by faith Jesus Christ and that he died on the cross for our sins and rose again is what gets you saved. If, you're, if you don't know Jesus, pray this after me. Lord, I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I I need a Savior. And I believe in your son, Jesus Christ, that you sent him to this earth. And he lived 33 sinless years as a man. But he chose to die on the cross for my sins. And he rose again and defeated death. And through that, I placed my faith in that. And I want eternity in heaven with you. Now, if you're a Christian here and you know Jesus Christ, you've gone through trials already and, and you're going to go through more in the future. How is your faith? Is it ready for the test? Are you making it through the test of, of your faith? And are you, are you ready for it? Are you living a life ready for this test that will come? Not when, but it will. It will come. Are you ready to be tested? Are, are, are you steadfast? Are you ready to remain under the trial because it is a blessing in disguise? Are you also ready to have a true life transformation so that not only your family can see you, but unbelievers can see it through you? That they want that thing that's helping you make it through the hardest moment of your life, through whatever trial you're going through. Those are questions that you need to ask yourself as a Christian. And I pray you're able to answer them. Through God's word today, God's word answered them for us. And I pray we're able to apply them when we leave this place. 
Lord, thank you for this wonderful day you've given us. Thank you for this opportunity you've given us to read your word and to understand it and to apply it to our lives. I thank you for this opportunity you've given us to be able to understand that trials are not um, are, the trials are a blessing in disguise, and there's a purpose for trials in our lives. That we not run away from trials, but when we go head on into the trials that are coming our way, knowing that with you on our side, we can make it through anything. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.